Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, powered by the Retirement Income Store and brought to you by Adjami Financial Strategies in Guilford, Connecticut and Denver, Colorado. In the New Testament, the Bible, uh, Matthew 25, 14 through 30 says, for it is, Jesus says, for it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another uh, two, and to another one, each one according to his own ability, and he went on his journey. The one who would receive the five talents immediately went out and did business with them and earned five more talents. In the same way, the one who had received two talents earned two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money in the ground. Now, after a long time, the master of the, those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came up, brought the five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have earned five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things and enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I've earned two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. Now, the one who had received the one talent also came up and said, Master, I know you're a hard man, reaping where you do not sow and gathering where you do not scatter seed. And I was afraid. So I went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you still have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You worthless, lazy slave. Did you not know that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter seed? Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But for the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And throw the worthless slave into the outer darkness, in the place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. We're talking about CDs, and are CDs a good deal? What are CDs? Um, what do slaves and money and <laughs> holes in the ground have to do with CDs? That is kind of a weird story there. <laughs> well, you know, you know, uh, I love the words of Jesus. I'm a student of the Bible and man of faith. And uh, when, uh, you know, I, I look at this and think about money, think about CDs, I think about this parable because Jesus always told stories. Um, he told a lot of different stories. His stories uh, many times talked about money, and it's not that money is important as much as that um, you know money is a, is a tool in order to do things, and money gets people's attention. And uh, that's why, you know, we have this show, we're getting people's attention when we're talking about financial strategies. So in this case, um, you know, the slaves that we're talking about, you know, could be servants, they could be employees, they could be whatever, right? The idea is that here was a guy going on a journey, gave out, um, uh, put in charge, gave, gave some of his assets, gave some of his money to his um to his people to handle for him and to see what they could handle. And he gave five talents to the, to the guy with five, you know, to, to, he gave five talents to the one cause he could handle more. And he knew that the one with that he gave two to couldn't handle as much as a five, but could handle more than the one he gave the one to. And the one he just tried out and, um, um, you know, gave the one, which the whole idea behind that is too much is given, uh, it, what, what, you know, if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the big things is a concept here. So, you know, when we're talking about money, Jesus says you should at least put the money in the bank and gotten interest on it. Well, the, the, the issue today, right? Generally speaking with savings accounts, you put money in the bank, it's worse than putting it in the ground back then for the most part, because back then they didn't have as much inflation as we had today. So, you know, you put $10,000 in the ground 10 years later, um, 10 years later, you got $10,000 worth of purchasing power. Today, you put you have $10,000 in your checking account, your savings account, 
And 10 years later, you don't have $10,000 worth of purchasing power. It's less purchasing power, right? So you're, it's worse than putting it in the ground back then. And Jesus said, you should have put it in the, in the bank and with interest. Well, banks, generally speaking, aren't paying interest, but CDs are today. And that's the point of the story. Getting interest, making some money on your money, as opposed to just, uh, you know, storehousing it, basically burying it in the ground, or worse today, by putting it in the bank. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So some people may have forgotten what CDs are because it's, uh, <laughs> it's been so long since they've paid anything, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we lock some people in into some nice CDs, not nice like today, but nice CDs in 2018 when they started raising rates. And those are coming due now. So the people were able to make, you know, three, three and a quarter percent over that time frame, which was a nice thing. Mm -hmm. But if we look at the banks, banks are paying what, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 on a savings account. And if you go to like an American Express or a city online or something like that, maybe you could get two to 2.3. And we may surprise some people with some of these CDs that are available right now, right. which a uh, one month you could get 3%. You go out to five uh right. years so anything in between there five years you get four and a half percent so these are some these are some crazy numbers some unheard of numbers over at least the last decade right what it would yeah, have to be right. like the 90s or or was it no. maybe in in 2000s but, yeah well 2012 we we had five-year cds at four percent all right okay. so so today you're talking maybe a little bit Four and better a half, than that a little bit right? better than that yeah so 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 really in the financial crisis of 2008 they were still in the five percent you know high fours five percent for a five year uh from that standpoint and now here we are you know we're recording this in september almost october of 2022 and you know rates have just gone up uh this past week i think i, I lose track of time recently <laughs> they went up and, uh, and uh, um, mr so, mr powell told us he was going to raise rates and crash the markets at the same time right so yeah, you got uh, higher rates and uh lower right markets. well and and that's what happens and that's exactly what happened right the market came down it's as low as it was in june if not lower and and uh, people, these, these interest rates are looking pretty good to people. But if you just joined us, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajmi, because people don't know what people don't know. And so we want to inform you to be able to make smart decisions, educate you, and serve you in that fashion. Today's topic is, are CDs a good deal? And, um, you know, we have a paper that we want to give to you today to um, help you with this. Uh, and educate you on this. And it's called The Case for Fixed Income. And this is a short paper. It's about three pages or so and uh, three, four pages. And with it, it's going to give you how to be able to avoid common mistakes that people normally make with their money, especially retirees normally make. And so we'd love to put this in your hand for free, The Case for Fixed Income. Um, call us at 800-725-7616. One six for your free copy, no obligation. We do need a couple ways of contacting you, uh, and you can have that for free. Just ask for it by name, fixed income paper. All right, uh, you listen to financial strategies with Andrew Daniel Ajmi. Our, our CD is a good deal, Daniel, and CD stands for certificate of deposit. These are not the little round disc, you know, that look like a prism and shine nice. Okay, that we're talking about here. We're talking about CD stands for certificate of deposit, right? And it's something that's been around for 40, 50 years, primarily, you know, 40 years ago, uh, you know, these, you, it was not, you could get CDs paying out 15, 16, 17% from that standpoint. Uh, the nice thing about CDs is that they're insured, right? FDIC insured, but you have to, uh, the insurance level, I believe is like $250,000 per account. And so, you know, if somebody's putting a lot of money into CDs, they have to be careful about, um, how that is set up in the banks and that kind of thing. So um, that takes some strategy, right, Daniel? Yeah, absolutely. And and I don't know, I was talking to a client the other day, and these, these numbers I threw were quite a bit different than what his bank was offering. And um, that's something where the, we're talking about brokerage CDs, where you have a brokerage account, right? and you are able to search for the CD or the bank that will offer you the best rates. And so 
these are something that we say, are they a good deal? Well, someone might say, well, 4% doesn't sound like such a good deal when inflation's eight, you know, eight and a half. Um, but everything, everything is in comparison to what, right? Right. So, um, I'm sure there's people in Apple stack right now who have made some money and they're scared about what's going on in markets. And they're saying, well, 4% FDIC insured is sounding pretty good right now. Um, I could take, I can take these gains. I can park that for a few years and just earn a nice steady return without losing, um, any of my principal. Right. 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 Um, and the inflation rates, the Federal Reserve is doing everything they can to bring those down. So historically, we're nowhere near those numbers, right? Mm, right. And if you look at the S&P, you look at stocks that are supposed to be this great inflation hedge. <laughs> and I think it's down like 23% year to date, right? Mm, right. Um, and inflation is 8%. Well, that wasn't such a great inflation hedge. No, so that's everything is comparing, right? Like like a 4% against an 8% inflation minus a negative 23% compared to an 8% inflation. You, we're com you, you got to look at things for the risk-adjusted return and what's important to you, right? right? What's important to your needs? What's important? We talk a lot about lifestyle, right? Yeah. We talk yeah. about retirement and protecting your lifestyle because you didn't save up all your money. So when there's inflation, you could also have a negative 23% return on your assets, right? Everything, everything has a place. And right. that's sort of why we've been going over these alternatives, right? Right. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about how whole life insurance, how life insurance really works and the benefits that are available for while you're living. Last right. year, we went over I bonds, right? right? Inflation adjusted bonds for individuals and how those can protect your wealth, how those can help you in situations where there's high inflation. And today we're going to go over the kind of these CDs and how these may fit into people's portfolios. Exactly. Exactly. And so I'm really excited about the show today and uh, uh, encourage that it's going to be able to add value to you and our listening audience's lives today. The listening financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, and it's time for us to take a break. Uh, and uh, today's topic is, are CDs a good deal? Well, we'd like to give you a book that you can read if you're a reader. It's an easy read book, about 150 pages by our friend Mike Eason, CPA, PFS, uh, Common Sense Income Strategies. This book is for free to you. Um, if you like it, um, uh, you know, no charge, no obligation. We just need a couple of ways to contact you to make sure we can verify that it's going to get to you. We don't want to put it in the mail and realize that uh, it doesn't get to you. So 800-725-7616 will give you uh, this book. And the first five callers at 800-725-7616 be able to get a copy of Common Sense Income Strategies. We have a limited supply and you can have yours for free. Call now. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. So, Daniel, back in 1982, I was looking at buying a, uh, a new car. And, uh, you know, it was going to cost me $8,000 for this new car back then. And, uh, you know, I was looking at it and, uh, you know, the year before it was only going to be about $7,000. Um, but, you know, I didn't buy it the year before. I didn't have the money the year before. And, and um, you know, inflation was double digit back in those days. It was huge, huge, huge. Um, but, you know, it didn't matter to me so much at that point because I was making 18% 
in my money market account. Even inflation maybe was 10, 11, 12%, but interest rates were as high as 18% I was making. So it didn't matter. I was staying ahead of inflation and ahead of taxation on that standpoint. I'm Andrew Ajme. And I'm Daniel Ajme, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today we're talking about our CDs, a good deal. And I guess you're saying CDs are not a good deal because uh, you were making 18%. <laughs> well, that compared that, that to that. That 4.5% right? doesn't sound so good anymore. <laughs> well, like you said, when we finish the other segment, it depends what you're comparing things to, right? And so if we're comparing it to 40 years ago, that's not, you know, they're not such a great rate from that standpoint. But the, you know, my, and my point behind this is, you know, today if we're getting three, 4% on CDs, four and a half percent on a five year, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, you know, that's fantastic. As we had said, compared to 12 years ago, 10, 15 years ago from that angle from, uh, or any, uh, up to that point. Um, but you know, the key that I want to bring out with this is, you know, being, you, you need to, we need to be able to stay up inflation ahead of taxation. Three, four percent on a CD is not going to stay up with inflation. You mentioned a moment ago about about people say, "Oh, the stock market is such a great inflation hedge." Well, you know, it's down. You said twenty three percent inflation is at eight. That's a delta of thirty uh, uh, of thirty one percent. Um, you know, that people are losing. So, you know, they go, you know, something that that uh, last year cost ten thousand dollars. This year costs you know, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars from that from that angle. If they were going to take it out of the out of their out of their stock market account, it doesn't work real well um, overall in it, when you need it. That's the question. But this is an idea. It's part of a strategy, and um, people need to understand that we're not saying, well, oh, you know, CDs is the answer to everything. We're saying CD rates are good right now in October of 2022. Uh, but the question is, what are you comparing that to? And how does that fit in your portfolio? Because everything has a purpose. Right. And, um, you know, there's a couple of ways we could go here, because if you're comparing it to the hole in the ground or the bank, right? <laughs> um, you just did multiples, what, 40X exactly. of what you were earning in the bank. Yes. Um, and so that's that's pretty good. Um, that's actually really good. Right. And um, this is insured, right? Right. This is insured money. So we're talking about, when we're talking about money, we talk, we break it up into categories a lot, right? We break it up into the, the safe, which would be insured. Right. Um, the moderate, which deals more with promises, a company promising you to give you your money back, promising they're going to pay you a certain amount of money. And then we talk about the the hope portion, right? Or the right. aggressive. And that's where you you hope you're going to have a certain amount of return or you look at averages and you say, well, if the next 30 years does what the last 30 years is, then I will do well. Right. Now, what is a bear market, right? What is a bear market? Well, bear market is time, right? It's time. Is it going to take eight years to get back? Is it going to take 16, six years to get back? Is it going to take 15 years to get back to where you are? So if we're looking at a Fed-induced bear market, um, if we're looking at a deflationary environment going forward because assets are deflating, because um, technology is making things cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. If someone's watching this on YouTube, if somebody's listening to this on their phone, that's free, <laughs> right? That's right. what technology did. It doesn't cost you a single thing. You're already paying for your phone. You're, you're listening to it uh, while you're doing something else. These right. are all deflationary things. And so if we are in a deflationary world, then you don't really have to worry too much about inflation continuing on for a long period of time because debt demographics and technology are are leading us to a deflationary world now you'd have to say well do i think we're going to have inflation at seven eight nine percent for the next three four five years and high interest rates and a four and a half percent cd doesn't sound good right because i think i'm going to be able to get a seven and a half in in two years 
Well, mm-hmm. that's the risk you're taking, right? You have to adjust that. You have to decide nothing is risk free, right? Everything right. has some type of risk that's involved right. with it. And we just do the best to manage those risks. Yes. Right. Right. Um, on the other side, if we're, if it is a deflationary world, then in a few years, we could be talking about zero or negative rates. Right. Because, you know, there's two camps. There's one camp saying, well, for the government to get rid of its debt, you have to inflate it away. So we need inflation to get rid of the ro- Well, if the, the interest rate on their debt is 6%, it's not inflating away. Right. It's growing. If it's 10%, do you know, you, that's $3 trillion a year of right. interest. Right. Of interest. Trillion it's not going to go away. No. Right? It's not going to go away. But if there's negative rates, that's also a way to get rid of your debt, right? right. Yeah. So it could go either way, and so that's that's why we're talking about some of these options, like the um, insurance that preserves, protects your principal, the I bonds that preserve, protect your principal, and these CDs. Now, these CDs compared to say those I bonds, you know what your rate of return is going to be. For whatever time period you pick, if you pick one right. month or you pick a five year, you know what you're going to get paid, and then you know you're going to get your principal back. Um, and that's a nice thing to know that you know you're going to get four thousand dollars a year on a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Right. And you get to do whatever you want with that money. Right. Right. Sweet. Well, if you uh, just are started listening to us, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami because people don't know what they don't know. And today's topic is, are CDs a good deal? Do you know about CDs? Well, we have a paper that we like to put, that we put together, we like to give to you for free by calling us at 800-725-7616. Call the case for fixed income. Ask for it by name, fixed income. And uh, we'll be glad to get that out to you ASAP, 800-725-7616. Daniel, you know, uh, CD rates, you know, you mentioned earlier that aspect of high yield savings paying, give or take, maybe 2%. And a lot of times those are not um, insured. Sometimes they might be insured, they might not be insured. Um, You know, when we're talking about uh, these insurance accounts you can have 250 per account. Uh, you, you you talked about you know brokerage CDs versus bank CDs. In a in a brokerage or managed account, you have CDs, and you can have a 200 you can have 250 thousand dollars CD, four different ones for a million dollars with four different banks, and still have them FDIC insured, as opposed to a, a perhaps a high yield mon- a money. Well, uh, money markets typically are not insured or to the, any great extent. Um, and so you got to weigh that because you say, you know, we have, you know, everything has rates, everything has risk to it rather. And, um, you know, we have that thing going on for people. And um, so that's another aspect where people have to manage. Yeah, exactly. You know, someone might just be a very risk adverse investor and say, hey, I, I 4% sounds good to me. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that for five years. Right. 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 Um, some people are, are laughing and they're saying four percent. The the market's average nine and a half percent over 150 years. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't want to do that. But it's strategies. So right. w- what we've done in the past when opportunities like this come up is um, mm-hmm. buy a one year. Right. And when, when when you see a lot of volatility you see a lot of negative indicators and you don't want to just go in cash because you want to earn something um but you want to be able to have dry powder for even bigger opportunities right so you could go one month we have clients doing that in anticipation to be able to redeploy that that capital into something at discounted prices right Right. Right. some people build a ladder right Every yeah. three months, having one come due, um, and so, so that's these things are easily utilized to either generate income or set you up to be able to participate in buying opportunities 
right? Where you don't have to participate in a 23% <laughs> decline. Right. Um, you could actually buy in or at least partially buy in at those lower numbers or keep waiting and see if we have, you know, this lag lower, which may look, it's sure looking like that's going to happen based on all kinds of valuation metrics, what the Fed's saying, things like that. But it gives you the ability to collect some income, keep the lifestyle you want, and be able to um, have money coming due in whatever time frame basically you'd like. Yeah. To redeploy when, you know, they say there's blood in the streets, right? Right. Right. And that's great. I, I want to talk to two different things there. One is the laddering you talked about. And the other is, you know, the 2018 example that we have, right? The whole thing about investing with what you're just talking about is buy low, sell high. And in 2018, we had some of those things come due. In December 2018, the market dropped like 25% if my memory serves me right. And we were we had these things come due that we now were basically selling in high. We didn't make much money, a couple percent over the past, the year before, but that gave us the dry powder, as you say, the cash to be able to buy low when the market dropped. And it helped our clients be able to be in a much better position It's part of the strategy that's involved in investing. So that's a, that's a key point here. It's, you know, it's not just a buy a CD and hold it for the rest of your life kind of thing. No, you know, you know, it's just the same way we don't believe when we believe in stocks, but we don't believe in buying and holding stocks for the rest of your life and, you know, buying mold in, a, in this kind of market or anything like that. So it, it's the strategies. And that's why you're listening to financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami, because people don't know what people don't know. And a lot of times people don't know about strategy. They know about plans, but too often plans are fact based upon fiction or fiction based upon fact, depending how you look at that. Whereas a strategy, a good strategy is something that doesn't change and you're able to move it over, move it into the future during your um, lifetime, during your retirement, as long as you have a retirement strategy, as opposed to an accumulation strategy, it can, you know, uh, that you won't run out of money if you have a retirement strategy, a good retirement strategy. So, Oh, uh, listen, we're about need to take a break. And before we go, we'd like to give you some more reading, some, some reading material, something to put in your hands so that you can find out more about what we're talking about. Easy read book, common sense income strategies, explaining uh, the things that uh, other than the stock market. We did a show uh, um, about a year ago called Tina is a liar. There is no alternative. Tina stands for there is no alternative, but there is alternatives. And that's why we've been talking about um, uh, re most recently I-bonds uh, last week, the week before that, what is a real life insurance and how does it work? And then this week we're talking about CDs. They're all part of the alternatives that when you're wrapped together in a nice package works well. This will tell you more about the alternatives, common sense income strategies, ask for it by name, income strategies uh, by calling 800-725- 7616. Next five callers at 800 725 7616. Thanks. History tells us the market goes up and the market goes down. What would you do if you lost half of your retirement savings? It's time to make the shift to steady, reliable retirement income. And where do you go? The Retirement Income Store. Log on to adjami.com for your free retirement review. That's A-G-E-M-Y.com. The Retirement Income Store, where retirees go for income. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. You know, Triple, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about that time and um, I needed a new vehicle. And we have a very good friend who owns a a shop, right? A, right? a mechanic shop. Very probably the best mechanic there is. You know, right. I've known a lot of mechanics. This guy's <laughs> probably the best mechanic there. He can figure anything out. But anyways, along with the business, they had this service where they'd go out to auctions and help you find All right. cars. So I said, this is great. This will be nice and easy. I'll just tell them what I want. I know exactly what I want. They'll go get me the car. The, it it was it was probably 20 30 percent cheaper than you could get on the market mm -hmm. makes sense so calls me up 
all right, I got this car. It's got everything you want. It's got the leather. It's got the sunroof. It's um, low miles, all this stuff. What color is it? Green. Okay. Hop on Google. Look up green. Green Ford Escapes, right? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Great. I love that color. Okay, buy it. Okay, got you the car. Everything's locked in. Good to go. Come pick it up. Go pick it up. Looking for it. Looking for it. Can't find it in the parking lot. Where is this thing? <laughs> Come to find out on the title, it says it's green, but no one would actually call it green based on what you see. I'm Daniel Adjami. And I'm Andrew Adjami. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami because people don't know what they don't know and how they're going to know unless somebody tells them. So your, today's topic is, are CDs a good deal? Daniel, what in the world does that story? I mean, that's a good story, man. I like that <laughs> story, right? It, it wasn't It wasn't what you thought you were getting, right? I think no, that has it's something like to do with it. cute color or gray <laughs> or, I don't know, tan. It, I, I don't know how you would call it green, but that's what it <laughs> says on the title. It says it's green. So um, just because something seems to be a good deal because it's easy to do doesn't mean it's right. the best for you, right? right? We like to own, we like to own contracts, right. right? We like to own individual securities. You buy a stock that doesn't have a dividend because you think it will do better than say an index, right? right? It has to do better than what you would earn in dividends as well, because why wouldn't you just buy the stock that has the dividend? Right. Um, you come into difficulties, especially if you're close to retirement age, <clears throat> when you're buying baskets of securities, right? Mm -hmm. So you buy a basket mm -hmm. of bonds. Well, mm -hmm. bonds are not really made um, to trade when emotion starts going crazy, right? Right, right. They're made to hold because you have a contract behind it. So right. if you get just like the CD, right? A bonds and CDs are very similar, right? They're contracts. Yeah. They're contracts. One is insured by the bank. And if the bank defaults, it's insured by the government. Yeah. Um, by the FDIC, right? Right, right. The other is backed up by the company that's issuing it, right? right or the right. municipality that's right. issuing it or the country that's issuing it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what you're getting. You're not, it, you're not going to be surprised. Now there are, you could not read something in the contract or whatnot and be surprised, right. but you know what you're getting. It's not based upon what other people's assumption of green is. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So how does that relate? Well, you buy this basket of, let's say, bonds and you have a risk off of them where no one wants to touch bonds right the bond manager of that fund has to sell your bonds at whatever price he can get or she can get because joe schmo over there wants liquidity right this thing's not meant to be liquidated right now you have a contract you know that on this date you're going to get all your money back but they're forced to sell your position at whatever price they can get because Joe Schmo is freaking out over there and doesn't understand how it works. This is where people can get in big trouble. And instead of someone saying, well, this isn't really green. This is putrid puke color, right? <laughs> right. Um, you can run into problems. And you know how when emotion gets involved, it, it gets stuff even crazier. That's the same with an index fund. You don't know. You know there's 500 companies in there an S&P 500 or 505, whatever, you know, there is in there. But do you know how many of them are profitable? Do you know how many of them can actually cover their interest payments at right. current rates, let alone what we're raising it to? These are the kinds of things that you don't know. And who do you trust? Do you trust the advisor who puts you in the index fund? Do you ch 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 trust the index manager? Or do you trust like, the index creator, S and P. Like, who do you trust? They're just <laughs> right, right. What do you do right, right. Well, you you have to, you know, understand some of the basic principles, and that's where if you go with the very basic of work on contracts, 
well, you know, you got some security by the contract. And then from there, get somebody that helps you to be able to know what you know, to be able to move into the future. And that's, that's a good point, Daniel. You know, that's why we have a paper that I'd like to give out to uh, the people um, in our listening audience today. Uh, why investing in mutual funds could jeopardize your plans for retirement. So Daniel's talking about mutual funds. And, and if you have, you have no control on that, they've got the managers uh, that have, have that control. But sometimes the manager's hands are, they're, they're, they are, have handcuffs put on them. They have to sell when they don't want to sell because everybody wants their money. And that could hurt you. This paper that we have, it's only a few pages long, uh, will give you some good insight as to how mutual funds work. And, you know, you might have a 2030 plan, a 2035, a 2040, 2050 mutual fund. Same thing happens um, that, that it's easy, but easy sometimes is not just like with Daniel's car is not a, a value to you. You don't get what you think you're going to be getting. We'd love to put this paper in your hand. Call us, have it for free by calling 800-725-7616. 800-725-7616. Um, uh, in, in, call it the mutual fund paper. Investing in mutual funds could jeopardize your retirement. You listen to Financial Strategies. With Andrew and Daniel Ajami, today's topic is our CDs, a, a good deal. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about how matters what you're what you're comparing it to if cds are a good deal if you compare it to you know the stock market that's down 23 percent year to date inflation is up eight percent uh that that's a that's you know to make three or four percent is huge from that angle um but uh you know it's not just it's not the whole strategy it's not one thing you should do but if you have money sitting in it you know we've seen people with hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank doing nothing, that they could be making some money on that. And we have clients that have said, hey, here's $600,000 we want you to have for a couple months that we want to make 3% on. That's some good money from that standpoint, some good dollars for a couple months. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And the question is, what fits you? Um, Daniel, you know, these are good things that we're talking about. And, you know, you mentioned earlier on, you know, um, well, you know, we were talking about just then mutual funds and how when they're you're buying a mutual fund, what does that really do for you? Uh, there is, as far as I know, there's no mutual fund that has CDs in it, right? I mean, there's bonds, but there's no right. CD ones, right? Right. And and uh, you know, uh, you know, we could we could talk about treasuries, you know, short term treasuries, right. with CDs where you could buy a two year bill, maybe get four percent. So that would be. That'd be similar to the CD, right? Where a two-year U.S. government bond, where it can fluctuate just like any bond, but you know in two years you get your money back. Right. That could be in a mutual fund. But yeah, as far as I know, there's not a CD um, mutual fund or ETF. Right. And and one of the things about um, the um, um, the treasuries like that and um, um, Oh man, I just had a thought, but I lost it. But anyway, the point that I wanted to bring across was there's no really mutual fund, but one thing that you can do with CDs um, is ladder them. You And people may have heard about laddering bonds or laddering CDs. And I just want to go through that for a moment with the people listening to us, because I think it, it, it's important for them to understand this concept, this strategy, right? That if you buy a three-month CD and a six-month CD and a and a nine-month CD, and um, or you could buy four of them, right? You could buy a 12-month CD at the same time, and you got all these. So every three months, you have money coming due. So if you need the money, you've got liquidity every three months. And in that, in three months, the money comes due. If you don't need that money, well, now you can put buy a one-year CD at that point. And so you continue that ladder. Where that ladder breaks down is when CD when when CD rates and interest rates go back down to zero and one percent again and everything like that, like they were recently. Um, you know, you're you're stuck again. But this is a great concept because people say, "Oh, I don't. I'm going to need that money. I'm going to need that money." Well, I might need that money. Well, in a case like this, if you don't need the money, you're far better off than you would have been. And how many times have I seen people say to me? For years, I might need that money for a house I, I might buy or this or that or the other thing. And they go years and years and years without doing anything with that. 
And they could have made all this money in the meantime on that money. But if they do need, so, so, wor- so best case, you're far better off than you would have been. Worst case, you have money come and do that you can use. And, or if you have to even take the penalty and get out of it, um, you're probably still better off than leaving it in that savings account or that checking account that's making a tenth of a percent or one, a tenth of a one percent, you know, a, a tenth of a percent, you know, a yeah, tenth that's so of a tenth. <laughs> Funny, because I actually had that exact conversation with somebody yesterday who was doing that. They, he's got money sitting in his checking account that he's earning nothing. And so now he's going to earn $3,000 a year. Right. And it's the exact scenario you talked about. We talked about a different scenario where there was eight CDs instead of four. And you uh-huh. went out to two years because I think in two years, you'll be happy. Like it will be unheard of to get a 4%. So I, I said, you know, you could go out two years even if you wanted and have something come to every quarter yeah. for two years. Right. He wasn't comfortable with that. That's fine. He wanted to stick to just what the exact example you listed. <laughs> four, four CDs, right, in a one-year period of time. And that's fine too. You know, each person, right, we're all unique human beings. So we can't expect that one um, XYZ fund is going to be perfect for all of us, right? right? That's what they try to do with these target date funds. Right. Um, but that's not that's not how human beings work, right? We yeah. all have our own risk tolerances, our own lifestyles, our own challenges, and our own um, really paradigms where we see things differently and we need our investments to match those paradigms that we have. And so you shouldn't have a cookie cutter portfolio that just it's the X, Y, Z for a 65 year old. That doesn't right. make any sense. Right. How many, how many people do you know that look, drive the same car as you, wear the same clothes <laughs> as you have the same house as you, right? Maybe We're you know one person, yeah. right? But right. like, you don't, you don't design your life that way. Why would you design your, your retirement that way? It just right. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. You're exactly right. Um, you're listening to financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel. I mean, it's time for us to take a break. Today's topic is our CD is a good deal. Well, along with CD are a universe of other options, uh, income generating options that uh, you can make money. Definition of investment is something that pays you. We're talking about investments that pay you. CDs pay you. I bonds pay you. Life insurance pays you. Common sense income strategies. There's a myriad of things other than the stock market that you can invest in. And we'd like to give you this book so you can learn more about those. 800-725-7616 for the next five callers. 800-725-7616. I should say for the first five callers. Um, It's yours for free. And uh, we're going to need two forms of uh, contacting you just to make sure that we got the right address and that kind of thing. But call us 800-725-7616. Call now. I'm David Scranton, founder of the Retirement Income Store. If you're in or near retirement, Are you certain you have the right retirement plan in place? Do you want to help ensure your nest egg will last you all throughout retirement? Take our retirement review quiz and find out in five minutes or less if you're doing everything you can to achieve a more successful retirement. Visit us online at adjami.com. That's A-G-E-M-Y dot com. Welcome back to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Dad, you know, I I know a guy that's got a pretty big truck and likes to drive, <laughs> drive it off the road. <laughs> I should say that differently. Like yeah. the off-road is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also know a spot that has a really slippery, steep <laughs> slope to get up. And uh, we went out. We're driving up this mountain, driving up this mountain, him and another vehicle and the the guy driving the other vehicle goes all right this is a little much i'm gonna have to get out uh i can't drive up any further and the guy with the big truck says no problem i'm gonna drive up to the top drop these people off come back pick you guys up bring you back up 
So we're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> we finally decide let's walk up and see what's going on. Get up to the top, and there's his truck sideways across the road, <laughs> spinning the tires. <laughs> I'm Daniel Adjami. And I'm Andrew Adjami. You listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Today's topic are CDs a good deal. And I know we get, we get some crazy stories, Daniel, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, what in the world are we talking about? How does that have to deal with CDs, man? <laughs> uh, well, sometimes the unforeseen happens, right? Yeah. Um, and one gentleman said, this is getting a little crazy. I think I'm going to get out. <laughs> and the other gentleman with a lot of experience said, I've seen this before. I'm going to make it. No problem. And he got stuck. Now, <laughs> he had a plan. And his yep. plan actually worked out real well. He did get stuck. But he had all the tools. He had chains. He had come along. He had everything he needed to get out. And he was able to get his trick out. No damage done. Nothing like that. Um, because he had a plan, he had a backup, right? Yeah. A plan for when the unforeseen happens. Uh -huh. And if we relate that to what's going on in markets, it may not be so unforeseen what's about to happen and what has been happening is kind of predictable. Right. Uh, what's going on with markets and what could continue to happen. Yeah. Um, so what are people's plans? Did you already get out and you're just sitting there like the first guy he got out before he got his truck stuck? Or are you up at the top getting ready to do some crazy stuff and you don't know what's going to happen next? Do you right. have a plan if it goes sideways like right. his truck did in the mud? Right. Um, CDs, some of these things we've been talking about, these are, we're, we're trying to get people's minds prepared right. for the unforeseen. It may be unforeseen to them. Um, we talked about bear markets, I think, and what is a bear market, right? It's, yeah. it's time. Time. It's time, right? Is it going to take five years? Is it going to take 10 years? Is it going to take 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. We've had bear markets that last all these time frames. Yeah, right, right. You're right. Um, we, had, we had one that maybe lasted two months. That's, yep. that's not the normal thing. That's not what you should yeah. be expecting because that's a bear not cycle, what not a bear market. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you are close to retirement, what's your plan? Your plan, I mean, you do whatever you do. Right. But like my suggestion is somebody who's been doing this for a while, seen a lot of different things, right? Studies, <laughs> student of history loves studying this stuff. Right. That's a hobby of mine, right? Studying right. this stuff plus do it for work. Plan is not that you're going to wait. You're not going to spend money for the next however long the bear market lasts um, because you don't want to spend on your principal or to change your lifestyle. Plan is to have a plan just like this gentleman did to get his truck out or the right. gentleman before that who didn't even get into the problem. Right, right, right. You know, and what I what I take away from that, you know, the Boy Scouts are, you know, it, it, you know, their motto and then Royal Rangers is ready, right? The Boy Scouts are be prepared for everything, right? And, you know, when we're talking about investments, um, you know, it should be done the same way, retirement planning. You hope for the best, but you plan for the worst. And that way there, if the best happens, hey, we're in good shape. But if the worst happens, we're in good shape. Too many times I've seen people hoping for the best and planning for the best. Now, you know, in your example, uh, you know, the first gentleman who stopped and whatnot, he, he, he recognized what he needed to do and he was conservative in the whole matter and didn't do anything, mess up his truck or anything and just decided to walk. The second, he was at least, he was hoping for the best, but the best didn't work out. And he, but he planned for the worst. So he was in good shape either way in regard to that. And too many times, like I say, people's retirement plans, they're planning for the best, hoping for the best. And, you know, you know, it doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta, you know, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And these CDs are a way to be able to help people to be able to do that. Like we talked about earlier, that, um, you know, if they put money in CDs and, and then the market goes south and we're able to, to buy something when that CD comes due that can get them double digit return on a contractual guaranteed basis, hey, that's phenomenal. 
right? I mean, uh, you, you can't, you, you, uh, stocks are not going to guarantee you 10% return on a contractual basis. Um, and when we're talking about the laddering of the CDs, where, you know, we got a three month, a four, a six month, a nine month, a one year, and then every time those come due, we can look and just see, hey, do we buy another now? Do, you know, do we buy another one year at this point? Or is this a time where we can take advantage just like we did in 2018 and bought low so that people were able to multiply and compound their retirement monies? Um, you know, the strategies are important and the way we do that is important. Man, time's going by so fast. We're, I, you know, I need to identify ourselves as, as financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajme that you're listening to. Today's topic is our CDs, a good deal. And what we're coming up with is that the perspective you know, it's a perspective. It's what angle are you looking at it from? Um, as far as interest rate go, they're much better than they were a year or two years ago, even up to 10 years ago. But, um, you know, how do you use them? That's the key. The strategies are the point. Financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. And we have a, a, a paper we'd like to give you today uh, called Why Investing in Mutual Funds Could, be, could Jeopardize Your Plans for Retirement. And, you know, Mutual funds, everybody's about mutual funds, and mutual funds are the disease of ease. This paper is going to be able to educate you on that and help you understand that it may not be in your best interest to be investing in a generalized, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, carbon copy mutual fund that is meant for the masses as opposed to something customized that's meant for you. So we'd love to put this in your, in your hand. Just call, ask for it by name, uh, mutual fund paper. Um, 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. Daniel, we're fast approaching. I'm talking fast because we're running out of time fast, having a good time today. Uh, I'm trusting this is going to be helpful to the people in our audience and it, it, certainly they can apply it. Um, what else? What do we, how we need it? We only have a few minutes left. What do we say? Well, I these, these are a little unique, especially when you see these kinds of rates, right? You, up to like a five-year, four and a half right now. We'll see if it gets any higher with rate hikes. Although we'll, we'll see. That might have been the last rate hike, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the markets force the Fed to do going forward. But um, they can work really for two types of people, right? They can work for a kind of a passive person who just, they want their money to do something, right? Right. They're right. not. Um, they're not interested in stock market like volatility. They're not interested in losing principal. Right. Um, and this, or there's something very similar to it, like uh, what an insurance company would offer, right? right? Same kind of contract, except instead of from a bank, it's from an insurance company where it pays a fixed rate, but you can defer the taxes and things like that. Um, yeah, nice stuff. Yeah. With those. Or it works for somebody who is maybe a little bit more in aggressive and in tune to what's happening. And we've heard so many times, well, what's your plan? Well, I've got my finger on the trigger. You know, if, if markets start falling, I'm going to sell this stuff. And usually what happens when people utilize that strategy is they either miss stuff going back up or they pull the trigger at the bottom because usually that's when the emotion gets going crazy and they pull it at the wrong time. Blood in so the streets. Yeah. This for the, the person who is more in tune to taking advantage of mispriced securities has two options when they use this kind of a strategy. One is you're scared and you don't want to invest the money. So just invest the income, right? right? It's paying you. Right. So you don't have to worry about it. Just take the income it's doing and reinvest the income. The nice. second is, in the strategy you're talking about, something's coming due every quarter. Well, it comes due and you say, all right, why well, 100,000? I still got 75 in CDs. I'm going to take that 25 and I'm going to participate. Mm -hmm. And it makes it less scary and it gives you that, that capital right there to make that decision, right? And mm -hmm. so these things are able to help people in a couple different situations, depending on the type of person that you are. Yeah, that's great. And what I want to say as we finish, that's fantastic. And I just wrote down a note because I'm thinking <laughs> of a client that that's going to work for, you know, <laughs> and, and, um, uh, you know, the thing that I want to say is that, you know, when people think of CDs, they think, you know, 
it, there's a lot of negative uh, implications that come to people's minds, I think, and emotions. Just like when we say life insurance, we had to define life insurance so people understand the positive nature of that. Same thing with CDs. But here, here we go. Here's something I want you and our listening audience to listen to. So in a Many times, uh, you know, we have people that clients have had hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank for years because they might use it to buy a house or this or that or the other thing. And what I say now with rates being what they are um, and, you know, here's, you know, in a, in, by investing in CDs in a best case scenario, meaning that they don't use it for another couple of years, they're going to be far ahead from where they were if you left it in the bank. From a worst case scenario, you put it in CDs and you need it in six months to buy that house you're thinking of or whatever. Well, you're probably not going to be any worse off taking the penalty than you would being in the bank. So you got to look at it with a strategy of what's going to work in your best interest. And that's why it's important to use a fiduciary, a true fiduciary, somebody that's working for you rather than for stockholders or, you know, and that's willing to put it in writing. So anyway, um, you know, so there's different pieces that you can look at and use. Um, and the key is what is best in your situation for what you're trying to do. And that's why Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajme is here to help you by helping you to know what you don't know so you can make an informed decision on purpose as opposed to one by default. Uh, we have this book we'd like to give to you as we close up today, Common Sense Income Strategies. Um, this book is about 150 pages long, easy to read, and we'll give you some insight as to how and what options you have available to invest in preparing for your retirement to make sure you don't run out of money, to make sure that you are stress-free in your retirement. You can have that by calling for the next five callers, first five callers, I should say, 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. Call now and we wish you, or actually remember to invest for the I, not the G, if you want your retirement to be stress-free. 